I say anyway. Here we go. Mike's Daily Podcast. It occurs to me now that it is summer. I think you know, with my sweat pouring down my face right now at Cafe Anyway, I think it's summer. Mike's Daily Podcast. Or maybe I have a heart condition. It's something that's going wrong inside my body. So it's time to sing this song. It's F F episode 2866. That's 2000. 866 and the tricks that I play on this show are fun. Mike's Daily Podcast. To witness, to experience, to be part of the show. Mike's Daily Podcast, somewhere in Podcaster Valley, the last place Mike's on earth Daily in the land of Ameritopica. Podcast. Welcome to my program. Yeah. That I've been doing a long time. Summer songs. Summer is here. Favorite summer songs. Hey, I pulled this out of the Costco connection because I realized I have a huge stack of them. And at some point, my lovely lady friend is going to make a comment and say, get rid of some of those. Don't be a hoarder. So I'm trying to go through them and use them for my podcast. Isn't that a brilliant idea? Summer songs. The first one that springs to mind always is that car song. Summer. Summer, summer, summer. Turns me upside down I see you under the midnight All shackles and bows High heels with the dips are clicking Uh oh, it's magic That was a Robert John Mutt Lang produced song He produced a lot of ACDC stuff Billy Ocean was married to Shania Twain And he did that Cars album Oh, Brian Adams. Speaking of which, yeah, he produced a couple Brian Adams albums. Someone mentioned here in the Costco Connection, Summer of 69. Hey, it's got Summer in the title, Brian Adams. Then there's Summer in the City by The Love and Spoonful. School's Out for the Summer, Alice Cooper. Here Comes the Sun, The Beatles. Do, do, do. Here comes the... And here's today's podcast. Picture. The podcast picture today is not of the sun, but of the beautiful, you know, people give Berkeley and the Bay Area bad rap, especially after Oakland and all the mayhem with the robbing of stores and whatnot. People just breaking in and stealing stuff that uh, gas station, that 76 station in Oakland on Hagenberger. OK, but there's a lot of beauty around the Bay Area and there in the Rose Garden in Berkeley, it. And if you can't find a parking spot, just you, you'll find one. Just go into the residential district. The rich people that live close by, I'm sure they don't mind. Just park and go into the Rose Garden. It's free. <coughs> the late great Basil the Boxer never made it there, though. But we did, we did check out parts of the Berkeley Hills. Very beautiful areas. But see that picture at mikesdailypodcast.com and all my past podcast <coughs> pictures. Some other summer songs Can't forget DJ Jazzy Jeff With Fresh Prince Of course That would be Will Smith And the song Summertime Then there's Hot Fun in the Summertime By Sly and the Family Stone From the Bay Area Margaritaville Is that a summer song? Wasting away in Margaritaville Looking for my lost shaker of salt Some people claim That there's a woman to blame but I know it must be my fault. And then I get around. I get around. I get around. <laughs> the Beach Boys. Well, the Beach Boys did a ton of summer songs. So I guess you got to have the Beach Boys on there somewhere. According to Vox.com, it says, The collective search for a summer anthem is older than we might think. A 1910 New York Tribune article ponders the summer song's qualities. It asks... Is, is that why you're bald, Mike? <laughs> no, that's not the question it asks. Okay. It, it asks, will it be humorous? Will, that would be... It, it, it involves the humors. Would it be... Will it be unmitigated trash? Opinions on the season's top songs will vary, but if you're looking for recommendations, check out these iconic summer tunes from Billboard.com and RollingStone.com. California Girls, another Beach Boy song. Also mentions Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen. 
how is that it was popular during the summer when it first came out it was one of these big hits that got started it was one of the first songs that YouTube launched the career of although Carly Rae Jepsen we may argue didn't really have a career she had that song and another one she did with Owl City and then I forget the rest A Cruel Summer by Bananarama Danger Will Robinson Danger oh and we can't forget the other Cruel Summer song which came out last year by Taylor Swift Saturday in the park I think it was the 4th of July Chicago And for some reason it mentions When doves cry Dig if you will a picture You and me You and I engaged in a kiss Animals strike curious poses I always wondered What, what the heck did Prince mean by that? They do strike curious poses A lot of times not the kind you're thinking of Not those kind of curious poses But cats are always curious So whenever they pose I guess they're in a curious pose Okay, let's talk about San Francisco Hot time, summer in the city Back of my neck and dirt and gritty Well, how about San Francisco or New York? Visiting either Should be on everyone's must-see list Wendy Irvine wrote this in Costco Connection Each of these gorgeous cities has so much to offer A variety of ages and interests will be interested And in San Francisco, I find this fascinating as someone that lives a 45-minute BART ride away from San Francisco in Podcastro Valley. What do people say about it? She says, is San Francisco on your calendar for fall? It's a great choice because you'll hit the city's best time for weather. Yes. Hey, good looking. We'll be back to pick you up later. People drive by with their Mr. Microphones. And when they... uh, Those of you watching this live on Facebook And the Mike's Daily Podcast page Will not get that at all You'll have to go back and listen to the finished product But You'll hit the city's best time for weather When it transforms from the cool days of Summer Because Don't forget what Mr. Mark Twain said That the coldest winter he ever had Experienced was a summer In San Francisco It's true I remember leaving Podcaster Valley one day Getting on BART I'm wearing shorts As we go outside a cafe anyway Where we bring you Mike's Deli Podcast Somewhere in Podcastro Valley The last place on earth And by the time I got to San Francisco It was so cold And the whole day I was just What that was What was I thinking The city by the bay Sits on a small 7 by 7 mile peninsula It's ideal for outdoor enthusiasts History lovers Shoppers Foodies People that like to spend way too much money on food. Anyway. They're called foodies. Cafe anyway. Most visitors have a San Francisco bucket list. That includes the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz Island. Did you know that you can walk or bike the Golden Gate Bridge? There's no charge to trek this 1.7 mile stretch of beauty. But if you are going to walk... Realize that everybody else wants to walk it So it gets crowded And it gets tough to get around people You want to go at your pace But everybody else is slow and in your way But there's amazing views along the way Except if you go during the, the summer Because there's usually a bunch of fog And you can't really see that far from it But I went in February this year When my cousin from Germany was visiting And the view was insane And we got great pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge Once we crossed the Golden Gate Bridge We were in the Marin Headlands From that vantage point It's amazing Let's see, it says Most visitors have a San Francisco bucket list Including the Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz Fisherman's Wharf is a tourist-friendly historical area That includes Pier 33 Where you can catch a ferry to Alcatraz but you got to make an appointment, usually, to get, to get on that list. And that, of course, housed high-profile criminals like Al Capone and the Birdman. Then there's Pier 39. That's free to see, where you can watch the goofball sea lions. Oh, yeah, Alcatraz. That costs quite a bit, I think, now. Oh, and when you make an appointment, you gotta you gotta make it well in advance if you want to go to Alcatraz. I had to make my uh, appointment at least three months in advance. And you can watch the goofball sea lions. Apparently, the sea lions have just infiltrated Pier Thirty Nine. I was there in February. It's there, a were, trap. there weren't that many, 
But suddenly all these sea lions have appeared lately And due to some sort of fish That, that, that there's a lot of the, the, the ch- 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 Changes There's a lot of these fish apparently uh, That they like And so there's a bunch on the piers Near Pier 39 They've just left The boats abandoned it years ago And it's just a bunch of Pier uh, 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 Floats The docks that they they get on and they're fun to watch. Speaking of food, you can eat some of those seals. No, that's not true at all. That would be terrible. Speaking of food, San Francisco's culinary landscape is fiercely competitive, which means one thing for sure, delicious dining. The farm-to-table movement began in the Bay Area and San Francisco was one of the first adopters to incorporate fresh and seasonal produce from California farms. Into their menus Getting around San Francisco Is easy That's what it says here Not exactly sure If that's true (laughs) Mike is awesome Um, I'm just keeping it real BART Bay Area Rapid Transit Which I heard today You can purchase A BART Christmas sweater Now They were all the rage Last Christmas I did not know this This is what I heard today I guess you can buy A BART Christmas sweater Sweater And the BART train looks like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer And it even makes that Boop boop sound that Boop 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 BART sound I did a perfect impression of a BART sound As it pulls into the station And you're looking at your watch going Wow, I am so late Okay Yes, the Bay Area Rapid Transit Includes eight BART stations in San Francisco you have a lot to choose from with the public transportation. There's muni buses, light rail trains, historic streetcars, the iconic cable cars. But for the iconic cable cars, be ready to wait. It can be a long wait to get on those things. The paying, paying for the cable car is confusing too. I don't quite get, there's a kiosk involved And last time I looked in February I I was all confused Then there is the street cars That take forever for them to show up I'm I'm adding a little to this article Apparently this is missing all this important stuff here This critical information is absent from this article I'm quite Upset about that. Mike makes music. Oh, oh, okay. It's time for me to make music. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. We heard a lot about uh, San Francisco, the city by the bay. There was a famous band that sang about that, and now you hear them every single day. But did you know about the city? And some say it's full of crap Well, it's not really that bad It's that place called the Big Apple And it's known as New York City New York City is a brilliant idea In every season But don't go in August Because your whole body will turn into a pile pile of water and you'll sweat Thank you That was my latest song Called Yeah How's the mic Mike New York New York Am I gonna get sued For calling it New York New York New York City Is a brilliant idea In every season But the Big Apple Sweet spot is December When the city's Seasonal splendor Is on full display But watch out If the temperature Is below zero Probably don't wanna go The Christmas tree At Rockefeller Center Is a carriage To a carriage ride In Central Park And if you love plays, of course, there are 41, 41 Broadway theaters, Broadway, that present award-winning masterpieces like Hamilton and Aladdin. And I think that my favorite Hamilton song is that Wait For It song, along with new shows that I've never heard of, like Water for Elephants, not Water for Chocolate, Yellow Face, The Heart of Rock and Roll, which I heard did not do so well, even though it had great Fabulous Huey Lewis and the News songs in them. Then off-Broadway theaters are generally located in Greenwich Village and on the west side. If shopping is your passion, a visit to New York City's charming winter markets is a wonderful way to eat 
great food. Maybe you'll meet a Wookiee in at Broadway. Oh, those holiday markets are all the thing in Chicago too. I've seen some video on that, and they've got some interesting foods from the home of the winter markets in Germany. They've brought some f- German foods and adapted them to Chicago life in there in some of those winter markets too. Thinking about winter markets here in the middle of summer. The popular Bryant Park is an open market in New York with over 100 vendors housed within little jewel boxes. Right. And then, of course, there's the Union Square Holiday Market, the longest running open air market and largest. It has 150 vendors. And Chicago is another amazing city to visit. The three Chai Town hotels are near the Theater District, the Civic Center, and Millennium Park, which includes the JW Marriott Chicago, which is the 21 story hotel with spacious rooms and soaking tubs. Enjoy its heated indoor pool, spa, and restaurant. The Canopy by Hilton Chicago, which has a rooftop restaurant. And then the Hyatt Place Chicago downtown, it stands at 18 stories, has a heated indoor pool. Ooh, and it's got Wi-Fi. How exciting. Look who's here. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's Jolly Too Hard, the gift of supervisor. Wow, this podcast has really turned into like a travel lock, Mike. Yes, it has in the middle of summer. We're thinking about Christmas and snow globes. Are you selling any? That's right, Mike Matthews. Here's one right now. That is not a snow globe. That is an egg. I keep telling you, these are not snow globes. These are eggs. They're eggs. They're eggs. Mike Matthews, when you say it three times, then it becomes more truthful to me, Mike Matthews. There you go. It's an egg. Look, I'm crushing it in my hand. It ee. Look who else is here. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer. Wow, Mike, this is very fascinating stuff. And you're sending it out live over the internet. Mm -hmm. Yes, live over the internet. Live. Next show, it's going to be the wonderful um, Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. What was that all about? It was a show is what it was all about. And have you heard that he hasn't done many rallies lately? And the next one he's going to do is basically on his own property in Florida and so people are going what what's what's he what's he what's he up to why hasn't he been and oh real quick we haven't done it yet but Joan Benedict Steiger she was on Candid Camera which was a show I used to watch when I was a kid and I was like oh this is so funny look they're catching people this is how people really act when they're being caught on camera with funny things that happen. She died. She was 96, and she was married to Rod Steiger. Who is Rod Steiger? Why would you even ask who Rod Steiger is? It's th- is it the guy from Twilight Zone? No. He was an American actor noted for his portrayal of offbeat, often volatile, and crazed characters. Hi there, Mike. How are you? Doing pretty good. Thank you for asking. He was in On the Waterfront. He was in The Pawn Broker and In the Heat of the Night. Um, not to be confused with the Twilight Zone guy, which was the... A uh, guy named Rod Sterling. Rod Sterling. <sighs> All these Rods. Ugh. I'm not a fan of the name Rod. I grew up with a Rod. <laughs> but there, how do I clarify this? Let's say um, there was a, a someone named Rod in the family for a short time. Very short time. And I wanted to ask them this question. What is the matter with you? Because they were off in many ways. Many ways indeed. But that's another story for another time. If you would like me to tell that story soon, or if you would like to call in and chime in about anything we covered today, if you'd like to add something perhaps to this podcast in some way, here is the phone number. Call Mike at the Cafe Anyway Hotline. Area code 
228-4640. Yes. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Yes, you can. You can call that. But we do have to go to the mainframe, and hopefully it will do that. Take us to the mainframe, and we'll hear from A-Frame and find out all things Mike's Daily Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.